Hello and welcome to 7 Days of Science, your weekly source for the latest science news. In the headlines this week, data from a lost Martian lander has revealed some unexpected material in the red planet's interior. A new species of extinct hypercarnivorous croc has been discovered, shark teeth may be under threat from an acidifying ocean, and much more. Remember to check out our unboxing of the latest curiosity box from a couple of weeks ago. It's got a rather special item that Ben got very, very excited about indeed. Prison? <gasps> what? I see prehistoric animals. I'm getting this one out. Oh, let's have a look at this. Oh, is that a pencil holder? Oh my gosh, this is going on my desk. What is it? Help support the channel using the link below and use our code 25BEN for 25% off the first box. There's even a free bonus item if you get the annual pass, which we got our hands on for our unboxing. So, what are you waiting for? Get Curiosity Box. Use our link. Use the code. Get the dice. My final message. Our top story for this week is the news that scientists have used data from NASA's InSight mission on Mars to find some very interesting clues about the red planet's apparently violent past. The InSight lander is a stationary robotic explorer that landed on Mars in November of 2018. Its mission was to study the inner depths of Mars, its crusts, its mantle, and its core. Unfortunately, too much dust on its solar panels eventually meant that it was using more power than it could recharge, and it eventually lost contact with Earth at the very end of 2022. A lot of very important data was still gathered though, and like in the study published last week, scientists are still making new discoveries from what InSight found. Mars has a very different planetary interior to Earth. The inner workings of our own planet are constantly moving and recycling. We live on massive moving tectonic plates, but Mars doesn't have tectonic plates and is therefore a single plate planet. The authors of this paper noticed that high-frequency seismic waves detected by InSight seemed delayed as they travelled through the mantle section of Mars' interior. The researchers believe that this data reveals the existence of material variations in the mantle that serve as remnants from the beginning of Mars' history, as a massive bombardment of objects shaped the red planet, leaving foreign material from the objects that impacted the planet, and material from the planet's crust in the mantle where it still sits today. These fragments are actually really quite small, only in the kilometer scale and only up to about 4 kilometers wide. At a planetary scale, this isn't very big. It's a really cool insight into Mars's history because, as we mentioned earlier, Mars's interior is quite a lot more stagnant than our own planet. After this cataclysmic early period, Mars hasn't really had the interior development that Earth has. So, not only do these fragments show us literal pieces of Mars's past, they are also a great indicator of just how primitive the interior evolution of Mars and presumably other single plate planets is. We still know very little about Mars' interior, certainly in comparison to our own, but everything we learn can inform us a huge amount about other planets around the universe. It's a lot easier to study the interior of the planet you live on, so we've got a much bigger dataset of Earth's interior, and we could stand to learn a lot more about other planets. As this study may have just shown us, our knowledge of the interior of planets could give us a small window into their often dramatic past. And now a quick update into the progress of SpaceX's Starship, the most powerful rocket ever built. SpaceX has had a bit of a tough time this year with Starship, including a disastrous explosion on the ground in June during a static fire test. There have been successes for Starship, notably the demonstration of the company's ability to spectacularly catch its enormous super heavy booster. Well, last week there was another prototype test that didn't end as prematurely as some of the others have. 
The Super Heavy booster was not caught this time around and instead went for a soft landing in the Gulf of Mexico whilst testing the use of a backup engine for the landing burn. Starship itself completed a full ascent burn and deployed Starlink simulators in its first successful payload deployment demonstration. After an engine relight, Starship was deorbited and put under heavy stress to test its re-entry capabilities. It retained structural integrity, flipped over and completed a soft landing in the Indian Ocean. SpaceX have always talked about the enormous amount they can learn from their failures, but it will doubtless be a great boost to morale to see such a successful test after so many issues. First up in the paleontology news for the week is the discovery of a new species of large, hypercarnivorous prehistoric croc that lived 70 million years ago in Argentina. It's been named Costanzucus atrox and is known from a beautifully preserved complete skull and lower jaw, plus a good deal of the bones from the body and some of the animal's bony armour plates. The anatomy of this ancient croc clearly demonstrates that it was an efficient killer, with large serrated teeth perfect for puncturing and slicing flesh, as well as a robust broad snout. It likely measured up to three and a half meters in length, or 11.5 feet, making it the second largest known predator from this Cretaceous aged formation in Argentina, after the giant megaraptor Maip macrothorax, which shared this environment with Costanzucus. This croc shows signs that it had some incredibly strong jaw musculature anchored to its skull bones that would have powered devastating bites, and the authors state that it could have tackled some sizeable prey, likely including the dinosaurs it lived alongside. A truly spectacular new prehistoric discovery. Also in the paleontology news this week, a new species of dinosaur has been discovered. Found in early to middle Jurassic Age rocks in southern China, it's a new kind of sauropod dinosaur, the famous group of long-necked behemoths. Named Huashanosaurus chini, it's represented by a fragmented partial skeleton and would have measured around 12 meters in total length, or about 39 feet. As a fairly early sauropod, it's an important new species for working out the evolution of these amazing animals, adding to the known diversity of these animals at this point in the Jurassic. It has also helped to more specifically date the age of the geological formation in which it was uncovered. Huishanosaurus seems to be fairly closely related to the immensely long-necked sauropod Mamenchisaurus, also from China, but which lived much later. An exciting new dinosaur discovery then. Up next in the news, a new study has determined when the planet's deep oceans first became oxygenated, a topic that has been heavily debated among scientists. It was previously thought that the deep sea became permanently oxygenated during the Ediacaran period, around 540 million years ago. However, more recent studies have uncovered evidence that this was a far later occurrence. Now, using a method that looked at the ratios of selenium isotopes in marine sediments over time to assess relative oxygen levels, researchers have confirmed that the oxygenation of the deep ocean took place between 393 and 382 million years ago, during the Middle Devonian period. Very interestingly, this coincides with the large-scale spread of woody plants across terrestrial environments of the time, as well as a notable evolutionary radiation of both invertebrate and vertebrate marine life, as they were able to access deeper waters and expand to fill new niches. Therefore, it appears that the burial of wood from the Earth's first forests sequestered more organic carbon, consequently increasing marine oxygen levels and leading to a marine revolution as prehistoric species exploded in diversity. Truly a fascinating new study shedding light on this critical chapter in Earth's prehistory. Also in the recent paleo news is a paper documenting the unusual occurrence of a large Jurassic nautiloid with evidence that a marine reptile had bitten into it. The nautiloid, a kind of cephalopod closely related to the living nautilus, was uncovered in mid-Jurassic aged rocks in southern Poland and very clearly displays two large puncture marks on the underside of the shell. Based on the size and shape of the bites, 
the most likely culprit was a pliosaur. The attack on the nautiloid was most likely fatal for the cephalopod. However, it may represent a failed attack on the part of the marine reptile, since there are only two punctures. It's possible that the pliosaur struggled to properly grip the thick, slippery shell in its mouth, so quickly gave up and dropped it. Or perhaps it managed to rip the soft body of the cephalopod out of the shell without causing more damage after making the punctures. Either way, this is a fascinating example of an interaction between predator and prey preserved in the fossil record, providing us with a glimpse back in time at this pliosaur's nice little snack. Last up in the Paleo News for the week, we just had to mention this stunning new fossil of a Triassic marine reptile that preserves remnants of the skin. The reptile is a nothosaur, a relative of the plesiosaurs, and was uncovered in mid-Triassic rocks in Switzerland, dating around 237 million years ago. This virtually complete specimen not only preserves the entire skeleton and skull, but a carbon film surrounding the body and limbs actually represents the outline of the skin. Amazingly, this outline shows that the hands and feet were webbed, and the way it expands quite far out behind the arms and around the chest region implies the existence of enlarged forelimb musculature here that helped the animal to propel itself underwater. Additionally, the carbon film preserves traces of individual scales, confirming that these reptiles still possessed such structures and were not scaleless as in some other marine reptiles such as ichthyosaurs. It's therefore an absolutely astonishing new discovery for so many reasons. Finally for the news this week, some research published this week has highlighted how ocean acidification may affect shark teeth. The average acidity of the ocean has increased by 30% over the past 200 years. By 2300, it is projected to increase much more, making seawater roughly 10 times more acidic than today. To test the potential impact on sharks, researchers collected discarded teeth from captive black tip reef sharks and placed them in two 20-litre aquariums. One at the current average pH of 8.1, and the other at the predicted future pH of 7.3. Before and after the experiment, the teeth were measured and imaged using scanning electron microscopy. The results showed that the teeth exposed to more acidic water suffered significant corrosion, affecting both the crown and the root. Damage to the crown could weaken the tooth's mechanical strength, impairing a shark's ability to capture and eat its prey. While increased serration was observed, which might improve cutting ability, it is likely to reduce structural integrity, increasing the risk of breakage. The scientists do note that teeth inside a living shark's mouth may react differently, but the study still demonstrates the clear risk. As sharks are apex predators, any decline in their hunting efficiency could affect predator-prey relationships and destabilize marine ecosystems. Well, that's it for the news this week. I really hope you enjoyed learning about everything that's happened in these last seven days of science. Be sure to email us at 7dos.stories at gmail.com if you have any research you'd like to see us cover, or if you want to let us know how we can improve the show. You can follow 7 Days of Science on Instagram and TikTok, and also be sure to support us on Patreon if you enjoy what we do here. Our patrons have been enjoying early previews of all of our recent 7 Days of Science scripts before the episodes themselves are released, so don't miss out on that. As always, a big thank you to our patrons, including Andrew Kawam, Chang Yin, Chippy Chippy Chapa Chapa, Clara Middleton, Dine Batha, Diana Hernandez, Drub Shri Vastava, Gabriella, Gary Arrington, Giotist, I Rage, Giroux and Joy de Vic, John French, Joseph Ree, Josh Lambert, Corey Peterson, Lena Rose, Mark Nevin, Matt Grandis, Mendicant Fryer, Mike Pace, Monitor Man, Ralph Balzac, Robert Prietpajika Jr., Robert Thomas, Sammy Patrikas, Steve Bradshaw, Thomas F. Conroy III, Timothy N. Tedro, and Troy Schmidt. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week. Why did I do that? I've never done that before.